the images in Lisa's report. This survey. A mother's grief fills the largest morgue in Damascus. Samira's son Rafid drove the school bus. He died on the spot when the mortar landed. I don't recognize him, she wails. His face is gone. He has no eyes. And in this morgue, four children, including eight-year-old Vanessa. Her uncle Antun has come for her body. She was a pure angel, he says, in fourth grade. She loved school and cried when she couldn't go. Grief isn't private here anymore. Not when both sides accuse the other of taking the lives of the most innocent. Another uncle says his last goodbye. Stand up, stand up, my nephew. This is for you, Syria. They bring out the white coffins one by one. Vanessa makes her last trip to her Armenian church. This is one of Syria's many Christian faiths. Gather in the old city to celebrate her life in Arab tradition. This boy mourns his friend, supported by his mother, who's devastated, like so many here. What, what did they do to, 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 to die like this? By some bums, dirty people. Please tell America, please tell Britain, Turkey, Qatar. Saudi Arabia, they are bad people. A community comes together again to mourn, but as grief grows, so does anger on both sides of this conflict, both sides blaming the other. So as this war drags on, it becomes ever more difficult to bring the Syrians together again. Vanessa's coffin lies next to that of six-year-old Kovanis. There's some comfort in these rituals, but in this city now, nowhere feels safe. Lisa Doucette, BBC News, Damascus.